Okay, I'm back, and now we're going to actually conduct the experiment. And so you should now have read the concept introduction, and you should have also answered all of the pre-lab questions. So if you will go down to the procedure part of the lab, the very first thing it says to do is to measure the resistance of a light bulb at room temperature using a multimeter. So I'm going to do that for you and it's your job to write down the number and then put it in the yellow box. So we have a multimeter here and then this is the light bulb that we're going to be measuring in our experiment. So I'm going to attach it to the multimeter and then I'm going to dial it to ohms Okay, now wait for that to kind of settle down a bit. And then that says it's going to say point something. Okay, point something for the, the readout on it. Okay, and you write down whatever number it seems to be the closest to. I know it seems like it's fluctuating quite a bit, but just take a guess. What number do you think it's at? Okay. Now, the next part of the lab is, says part one is Wine's Law. And it says to hook up a light bulb to a variable power supply, and then as you increase the voltage to the light bulb, you're going to write down what happens to the temperature of the light bulb, what happens to the color of the light bulb, and what happens to the brightness of the light bulb. Now, I have just tried this experiment a few minutes ago, and it was an utter failure because uh, this video is not able to give me colors like I want with it. So that means that for part one, what you're going to do is go to the internet and just type in the changing color of light bulb or something like that as you increase the electricity to it. So I'm not going to tell you how to, where to find it, but if you'll go to Google and then the idea is to find a demonstration of somebody putting electricity to a light bulb and then showing how the color of the light bulb changes. So what is the first color of the light bulb that you see as you start to increase the electricity to it? And then how does the color change? So you should be able to find a video that shows that. Okay, once you've found that video, copy the address for that video and then paste it into the lab to show me that you found a video showing how the color of a light bulb changes. Now the brightness of the light bulb you can also see that on the video. So you can observe how the color of a light bulb changes and you can also observe how the brightness of a light bulb changes. Now the temperature though, that's a little bit harder to do because obviously you can't feel the temperature of the light bulb on a video, but you can imagine it. So imagine what a cold light bulb feels like to your fingers, and then as the light bulb gets brighter and brighter, if you were to touch that light bulb, what would it feel like? So I think that you know what's going to happen. Okay, so you're going to answer those questions under part one of the lab. Okay, then underneath it, it says to repeat the experiment observing the light bulb through a diffraction grating. And what colors of the rainbow are visible at low voltages? And then what colors become dominant at higher voltages? So you remember that we had this piece of um, uh, plastic that we called the diffraction grating and we held it right up to our eye 
and we looked at glowing gas tubes. So this time what you would be doing with it is you would be looking at the light bulb through the diffraction grating as you increase the temperature to it. And you would notice that at low temperatures one of the colors on the Roy G. Biv red, orange, yellow, blue, and so forth. So one of those colors would be brighter than the other colors. Then as you increase the temperature, so you're increasing the electricity, which is increasing the temperature to the light bulb, you would then notice that another color in the Roy G. Biv spectrum would start to become bright. Okay, there's always going to be a color in the Roy G. Biv spectrum that's going to be the brightest one. That corresponds to lambda maximum, which is in Wine's law. Okay, um, so I think that you should also be able to find that on the internet. So if you were to to look, uh, see if you can find a video that says how does the uh, the colors how do they what do they look like through a diffraction grating so see if you can find a video of that and then paste the address into the lab okay then is the maximum wavelength increasing or decreasing so you have to remember your electromagnetic spectrum where on the right hand side you've got the radio waves which have the largest wavelengths and then on the left hand side you had the gamma rays which had the shortest wavelengths and then if you recall the first visible color you come to is red and then orange and then yellow and then green and then blue and then violet so that red has the largest wavelength of the visible part of the spectrum and then blue has the shortest wavelength so now you should be able to answer that question is the maximum wavelength increasing or decreasing as you increase the temperature okay then go down to where it says how does this verify Wine's law so if you would write out Wine, Wine's law, which says that the maximum wavelength is equal to 1 over the temperature, okay, as you increase the temperature in that formula, the temperature is in the bottom part of the fraction, and if you increase it, what comes out? What kind of a number? Is it larger or is it smaller? okay and then that's going to be the wavelength and so see if that doesn't verify what you just found in the the previous question so uh, that finishes part one of the lab and now in part two of the lab we're going to do Stefan's law so uh, I'll stop the video here and when we come back we're going to go to part two of the lab